I think it's just showing what the world needs. Like I said, you know, it all starts with the children. Somebody has to stand up for the kids. Somebody has to stand up for the children. That's where they start with, you know, this agenda with the, with the younger group. Um, they're easily uh, manipulated by uh, making them feel like, you know, this is what everybody's doing. This is what you should be doing. And it's, uh, it's just not right. It's not it's right at all. This is Forgiato Blow. If you're unfamiliar with the dude, he's a MAGA rapper. Yes, that is a subset of the rap world, MAGA rap, dead serious. I talked about him not too long ago, but I got a voicemail about it recently, so I wanted to kind of give you a little bit of a refresher. Forgiato Blow made this song called Boycott Target, I believe, where he just keeps talking about how the kids are being manipulated and stuff like that. It's just crazy, dude. Oh, my God. Did, did, I mean, what does this guy have tattooed on him? Did, please tell me you got Trump's name tattooed on you. Right on your lower back, Trump. Right there. Trump's man. Oh, I would love that to death, dude, if this guy had that tattoo. Probably doesn't, but it's, it's you know, one can dream. Anyways, yeah, these people love Trump to their dying breath. It's bizarre. So listen to this voicemail I got about targets being attacked. If you're unfamiliar with the target situation, why he m even made a song about target being boycotted, it's because target had a pride section during pride month or leading up to it anyways. They had a section that sold, you know, queer and proud shirts or whatever. A trans bigotry can be cured through education, that type of thing. You know, just generally positive messages toward the LGBT community. Not a big deal. And they claimed, Forgiato Blow specifically, and the other people in the song, claimed that Target was grooming children because they were children's pride items. They weren't. They didn't sell any children's pride garb. It was only adult stuff, adult sizes, adult whatever. But they've got to make it out as though the children are being attacked because they can whip people into a blood frenzy if they claim that. So anyways, let's listen to this voicemail about Target and the boycott taking place right now. Check it out. Quick interjection. I won't take long. I just wanted to tell you guys, YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe, and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video. Hi, Owen. This is Miriam. Um, I'm from Oklahoma. Um, and Tough place to be. I just was reading stuff about um, some violent threats towards, like, Target. Um, and I was watching your MAGA rap video. And yeah, that's the uh, Forgiato Blow video we just watched. I did a whole segment on Forgiato Blow and his whole MAGA rap thing, if you want to see it. He did other songs, too, like Patriot Sweep. It's bad. About January 6th with Roger Stone and everything. Oh, you guys should just go watch my video on it if you haven't seen it. But okay. And I don't know. It's just, I mean, like, I've been in Oklahoma my whole life, and it's just hard to see, like, that this is the way people act to my community because i mean it's all over the the pride stuff so um i just want to know what you thought about that thanks yeah uh oklahoma is a rough place honestly especially in recent years it, it with the governor kevin stitt the dude is insane i don't know how else to put it he has real problems he's the one that gave over his state to jesus with the authority vested in him by the federal government. As the governor, he gave his state to Jesus. That's nuts. And Father, we just come against that. We just lose your will over our state right now in the name of Jesus. We just thank you that we claim Oklahoma for you as the authority that I have as governor and the spiritual authority and the physical authority that you give me. I claim Oklahoma for you that we will be a light to our country and to the world right here from our state. And we thank you that your will is done on Tuesday. And Father, that you will do have your way with our state, with our education system, with everything within the, uh, the, the, the walls behind me and the rooms behind me, Lord, that you will root out corruption. You'll bring the right people into this building, Father, from now on. Oklahoma is a rough place. And they seem to pick up on any culture war issues that arise. Target was the center of a culture war issue, claiming that gay pride was being pushed on kids and all this other garbage. So naturally, 
they pick up on it and run with it. It doesn't surprise me to hear that your target has been targeted, for lack of a better term. It's just a shame, man. I mean, seriously, uh, Oklahoma is a rough place right now. This is, while the target stuff's happening, this is happening in the school boards. This is uh, Superintendent Ryan Walters from Oklahoma. ...or an issue. Please send it over to us. But, you know, the, the teachers union, you know, I, I don't negotiate with the teachers union. They're a terrorist organization that is content. Members, members. He called the teachers union a terrorist organization. The superintendent. Dude he said a plethora of other unhinged things. If you want to see, I have a video on Ryan Walters, too. Uh, it's just nuts, man. Oklahoma is in a bad place right now. Uh, it's like a dystopian hellscape as far as I can tell. But thank you for the call. Uh, hopefully things hopefully you can stay safe in that in that place because it's I know it's not pretty right now. Hello, I'm from California. And just because my workplace is basically setting itself on fire, have you ever worked for a company or just any sort of business that ended up being like really corrupt internally? I thank you for the uh, voicemail. That ended more abruptly than I expected. I appreciate it. Yes, I have. Here's the problem. The question was, have I ever worked for a company that had uh, that was really corrupt internally, structurally corrupt? Yes. Corrupt people tend to float up into positions of authority. That's the general trend I've noticed. And you can see this exact same thing with cults, right? Cult leaders tend to be deeply immoral and unethical. They tend to be just grossly evil. The things that they're willing to do to keep control, to get control in the first place. They're willing to step on people's faces to get to the top. Cult leaders are, right? Like, let me give you an example. If I wanted, I could be rich tomorrow by coming out and saying, I'm a Christian, I was wrong, I believe it all, Trump was right all along, you know, I'm converting, I'm moving over to your side, and I'm becoming a warrior for Jesus. I would instantly be held up as a bastion of the right, like Dave Rubin. He did that exact thing. Started on the left, moved to the right. Started Jewish, turned Christian, or at least moved heavily Christian and encourages Christianity, right? If I came out tomorrow and said that stuff, I would be filthy rich. Here's a more direct way I could be filthy rich tomorrow. Sponsors will pay me thousands of dollars to shout out their stuff. There's a diet pill company that won't let up. Keeps sending me emails, desperate to get me to shill their diet pills or their whatever. You know, like Alex Jones style stuff. I could easily take thousands of dollars. Hell, I could probably make $20,000 per month off of diet pill sponsorships. 20000 a month. Easily. No joke. Say $1,500 per sponsorship, uh, 1500 per video. Hell, say I put two sponsored ads in a video. That's $3,000 per video, and I release eight videos on my main channel per month. 3000 times eight. That's $24,000 per month. But if you notice, I don't have any sponsored ads on my YouTube channel. Almost zero. I think I've done a sponsorship like three times total. That's uh, $288,000 per year that I could have if I only sold these diet pills on my website or on my uh, YouTube channel. There's a quick and easy way to do this. Instantaneously, basically. But I'm not a scumbag. Somebody with no moral sense has no problem with doing something like that. And they do get rich from it. They're the ones that get rich. You know, I'm sitting here and I'm crowdfunded and solely through ads. I, I, I'm not opposed to sponsorships. I'm willing to take them, but I'm not going to take just any sponsorship. But other people will take literally anything. It works the same way within companies and cults and religions and everything else. Look at Andrew Tate. The dude started a company taking advantage of women and taking their money. Why didn't somebody else do that? Because other people weren't scumbags. Why isn't everybody running websites like Andrew Tate ran? Because other people are not scumbags like that. The scumbags float to the top. They're the ones that find themselves in the positions to make 
millions and millions of dollars like that. That's why you find scumbags at the top of your company. They're willing to step on people's faces. I'm not. If I find myself to wealth and fame, fine. But I'm going to do it morally. I'm not going to step on anyone's faces. I'm not going to take advantage of anybody. I'm not going to sell fake diet pills on my website. I'm not going to pretend to be Christian. I'm going to do it the right way. And if I can't be rich, then I can't be rich. That's just what it is, you know? Anyway, thank you for the uh, the voicemail. I appreciate it. It was an interesting question. For a more direct answer, I worked for this software company. Um, I was one of their programmers. And this company was just starting out in West Virginia when I you know, got my job there. And they had some really, really good people there. Eventually, the CEO stepped down and gave the position to another person. The creator of the company gave, passed the reins to somebody new. And that person made a mess of everything. They changed the company culture to be one where you should be working as many hours as humanly possible for them. Your salary, by the way. And taking absolutely no breaks, just doing the job and getting it, you know, doing the job, working until it's done, basically. Working yourself to the bone. And the people that stood against that and said, this is a bad idea, please don't do this, were fired instantly. The top architect in the company was fired. And <laughs> they, they promoted another architect who was also very, very skilled, very good at his job. They promoted him into a position overseeing everything, you know. And then he was fired because he was pushing back against stuff. And he just, like, when they fired him, he just laughed. He's like, okay. Um, for the record, you guys were not paying me what I'm worth. I'm going to make a lot more money at another company. But okay, if you want to fire me, fine. Goodbye. So yeah, I've worked for companies that just went downhill fast. And it's best to just get out. Just do your best to get out if at all possible. Good luck on that. I appreciate the uh, voicemail. Hey, on with conjunction of my uh, uh, recent uh, last call, <clears throat> I believe that uh, it was a good move for the judge to uh, not place any restrictions on Trump. Yeah, so uh, Trump was indicted on a, an, a charge of espionage, stealing documents and refusing to give them back, if you're watching this five years in the future. And he was arrested, and the judge released him with no conditions, or, or almost none. He did have conditions, actually, but it was like they didn't take his passport, to my knowledge. They didn't take his uh, whatever. I don't know. What, whatever things they take when they arrest you, they didn't take it. They didn't bar him from traveling outside the state or outside the city or whatever other thing, to my knowledge. Okay, I think this shows <clears throat> two things. Okay, number one, when your enemy is making a, a, a mistakes, don't interrupt them. The Republican Party is eating themselves alive. So why stir things up anymore? Uh, <clears throat> and the second thing is the Democrats. That's true. I, that's fair enough. Let me just address that real quick. Yeah, I agree. The, the Republican Party is definitely eating themselves alive. Um, and the indictment in general might actually help Trump rather than hurt him because it gains more media attention. But yeah, I think you're right about that. Uh, don't interrupt your enemy when he's making a mistake. Second thing is the Democrats want Trump to run because they know he's going to lose. And they know that anybody who endorses him is going to lose. You might be right on that. It would be catastrophic in 2024, which I think they'll destroy themselves earlier because RIP GOP 2023. But it was a good move by the judge. Yeah, I, I, you may be right about Democrats pushing for Trump to be the nominee because they think he's more easily beatable. I feel like it's a big risk. For the Democratic Party to take by endorsing or, or behind the scenes subtly pushing for Trump to be the nominee. They did this exact thing in the midterms for Trump supporters. When they were running in primaries, the Democratic Party was actually, to my knowledge, funding the Trump nutcase candidates because they thought that they were going to fall in their face. They're going to fail. They're going to lose popular acclaim, popular support. And they turned out to be right. This is a risky strategy that they should not have done, in my opinion. But it was it turned out to be correct. And I, I think you're right that the Democrats are probably doing something similar right now, subtly, behind the scenes, pushing for Trump to be the nominee. I think it'd be a, a much harder battle if it was DeSantis running against Joe Biden, in my opinion. But 
DeSantis ran as far to the right as he possibly could when people thought he was more in the middle. And the moderates that were in support of DeSantis are not really in support of DeSantis anymore. I don't know why DeSantis did what he did, but it was political. It was politically a very bad idea for DeSantis to go completely nuts and start banning books in schools and talking about the COVID vaccine and all this other garbage. I don't know what he was thinking with that, but yeah, it's going to be an uphill battle for basically any Republican to win against Biden, in my opinion, in 2024. Got an email from Ali. Let's take a look at it here. Hi, longtime listener. Your YouTube videos and podcasts get me through working evenings. Love your stuff. Stay strong for us. Appreciate that. In one of your podcasts, this was some time ago, maybe January, February, you said something about Otherkin being started by a 4chan troll. I just wanted to ask if you were sure that info was accurate. Yes, it was started by 4chan originally. I was never part of it, but I've seen a lot of people get really into it. There's even a documentary about Otherkin called Animal People. It's where that meme in every aspect except physical, I am a wolf, came from. Yeah, there's also a documentary on a guy that was sexually attracted to balloons. There's a documentary on just about everything at this point. Otherkin is not real. It was created by 4chan nutcases. And I can see how plausibly people, you know, after hearing about Otherkin, people started to move in that direction and, and legitimately believe it. I don't know if you, you've heard of this. There's a book called Michelle Remembers. And it was written by a psychologist who was treating this woman named Michelle. And she came out and told him one day that she remembered being abused in these satanic rituals. So he starts pulling on these threads and, and helping her unravel this whole thing in her mind and figure out what happened. Now, unfortunately, when you do that, it's a recipe to create false memories. And false memories are insidious. This is why you should never try to help somebody remember something because a false memory is just as real as a real memory. So anyways, Michelle has this recollection of being taken advantage of in all of these different satanic rituals and remembers Satan physically appearing in front of her and then Jesus physically appearing and getting a scar from it and then Jesus removes the scar and all kinds of other crazy stuff. Therapist ended up marrying Michelle and writing a book about her whole experience. And it was the start of the satanic panic. Again, the whole thing was completely made up from the start, but people believed it. And after that, there was report after report after report of satanic goings on in daycares and preschools and kindergartens. All these kids being taken advantage of by satanists, these insidious satanists all around the country. Never know where they're at. It even came to the point where you had members of British Parliament talking about this. It, just was, it wasn't just a United States thing, although I think it was most popular in the U.S. But listen to what this member of the British Parliament had to say here. Satanism exists in this country as it exists elsewhere. It By the way, this is 1991. It's appallingly evil. It is about murder. It is about child abuse. It's about... It is no joke and must be taken seriously and must be dealt with. If they can ritually abuse children, if they can in any way uh, children, uh, anything to destroy a child's innocence or their trust or their, their wonder at the world, they will do it. So here's an example right here of an epidemic being revealed and then being revealed to be fake. After the book was published, people came out of the woodwork with all of their stories of being abused by Satanists. It was never real. Here's, here's another one. The book that was first written about the very first case of multiple personality disorder was fake. The person who claimed to have multiple personality disorder was lying the entire time. It was fabricated. And when I was in college... My professor seemed to be skeptical about whether or not multiple personality disorder was real. That's not the same as disassociated identity disorder, DID. Not the same thing. It's multiple personalities. But, you know, I, I think the scientific consensus now is that it is real. Anyways, the point is, you start something, whether it's real or not, and it becomes real to some people. Otherkin was started on 4chan as a meme, as a joke, as an attack against the trans community. And if it turned into something after that, then okay. But it was always a joke. 
And I don't know of any people who legitimately claim to be other kin and really think they have the spirit of a wolf or whatever. Aside from the guy in the documentary, I guess, uh, alongside the guy who's sexually attracted to balloons. Anyways, let's keep reading here. Whether or not it's a serious documentary, I'm not sure. Regardless, it might make an interesting video in the future if you want to cover the group. Personally, I believe they're harmless and ultimately about escapism, whether or not they're aware of that. Thanks for reading. Hope you have an awesome day. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, by the way, other kin and furries are not the same thing, just for the record. Furries exist. Furries are not like a right wing plant or something. I'm talking about other kin, people who believe they have the spirit of a wolf in them or whatever, specifically. John from Iowa. Hi, Owen. I thought of a couple things that might be valuable to point out about God's Not Dead 2. Yeah, I went through God's Not Dead 1 and 2. I don't know if you guys knew about that. It's on my Telltale Unfiltered YouTube channel. I went through the entire movie, both of them, start to finish, and it was unhinged from reality, for real. So here are some notes for it. For one thing, you should remind your viewers that every actor appearing in it is a right-wing Christian lunatic. Yeah, that's a really good point. Maybe I didn't point that out enough, um, or maybe not even at all. I'm not sure. Everybody in that movie is a far-right nutcase. They all knew what it was about, and they all signed on to it. They all agreed to represent the, the message that the movie was trying to spread. They all read the script beforehand and knew exactly the message the movie was trying to push. They were all nutcases, all of them. And as a matter of fact, for what it's worth, if you go to Pure Flix, that's the Christian version of Netflix, if you can believe it, that exists. Uh, if you go there, you'll find that a lot of the actors that, that played in God's Not Dead 1 and 2 are on Pure Flix also. Like, they consistently show up in Christian extremist propaganda, almost all of them. Secondly, there is a real absurdity to someone being willing to trash their career for a fairy tale. It's a metaphor for how worked up these people get about fiction that is 2,000 years old that she would allow it to put everything at risk. Yeah, so the, the plot of God's Not Dead 2 was this teacher was saying something super vanilla and like not extreme or blatant in any way. She just answered a student's question about a, hi a historical figure who happened to be Jesus. She asked a question about it, and she answered it, contextually appropriate. It wouldn't have gotten her sued, wouldn't have gotten her in any kind of trouble at all, but they had to portray her as being the victim of this horrific thing, you know, where evil atheists are coming after this poor Christian. Anyway, so the emailer says there's a real absurdity to someone being willing to trash their career as a teacher for their belief in the Bible. It's a metaphor for how worked up these people get about fiction that's 2,000 years old that she would allow it to put everything at risk. Yeah, here's the thing. The addiction model in psychology basically says that you are addicted to something when it seriously interferes with your life, when there's a, a, a serious problem where you have to leave work to get your drugs or where you're spending a disproportionate amount of money on alcohol or cigarettes or drugs or whatever to keep your addiction going. If you can't make it to family events, if you can't hold down a job or can't keep a family together, it's an addiction before that, but it's definitely an addiction then by that time. No matter what you are doing in your life, whatever it is, reading, going to church, drinking alcohol, smoking, whatever. It should never, even hobbies, fun things that you do, it should never interfere with the daily function of your life. You should be able to do your thing and finish your work or play your game or whatever it is without it interfering with your life. That's what the addiction model says. So what you said here about the fiction that's 2,000 years old, she would allow it, it to put everything at risk. Yeah, when you start putting your entire life at risk for really anything, it should raise some red flags. You know, some things are worth it. Your kids are worth it. Put everything at risk for your kids, their well-being, their health, and all that stuff. But you really need to sit down and think about this. Is this something that's productive to you, the, you know, to your life? Is this productive in other areas of your life? Is it doing more harm than good at this point? Anyway, thank you for the email. I appreciate that. It was an interesting question. Sometimes I play the same clips over again 
for longtime viewers, you will probably recognize some of them. The reason I do that is because, according to my analytics, people watch an average of two and a half videos on, on each of my channels. So if I haven't talked about a clip or if I haven't shown something or whatever, if I haven't said something specifically in the past week, it's unlikely that the listening audience is even aware of it. Now, you may be, but I get 400,000 unique viewers on my main channel, 1 million views in the past month. And then you you know, you've got Fireside which has been doing arguably better than my main channel recently. I'm just curious. Let me check the unique viewers on that one. This is like private information by the by. Information that you usually have to turn over if you want to work with a sponsor or something. 221,000 unique viewers on Fireside. So between the two, that's 600 and something thousand plus unfiltered. I haven't even mentioned unfiltered. Past 28 days, here we go. Uh, unique viewers, uh, 70,000. Interesting. That's lower than I thought it would be. Okay. So that's, what is that? that that's somewhere in the range of 800,000 to a million unique viewers a month, right? Anyway, that's why it's important to continue to hammer down on this stuff. If people haven't seen a clip, I have to cover it again. Budman Buds, welcome. Large dollar issues of late, nothing too big. Wanted to say hi. Appreciate that, Budman Buds. Yeah, don't sweat it. If you've got other things going on, that's perfectly okay. You know, with YouTube, I've been doing it for seven years, and I see people come and go. Oh, shoot, I think I'm coming up on eight years pretty soon, I believe. I see people come and go, you know? I see fans who stick with me to the end. I've still got some. Generally speaking, about every month, I have new fans that cycle in and old fans that cycle out. I sit here and I talk to people and chat and say, how's it going? And, you know, they send super chats, they send messages, and we just talk about our lives. And then eventually they move on and do their own thing. And that, that's fine. That's how it works, you know. But during COVID, I thought to myself, how many of my normal, regular old fans stopped coming to my stream because they died of COVID. And I, I'll never know. I'll, nev I'll never have any idea that they didn't leave generically just because they had other interests, but because they just died. Really sad. Gotta wonder how many. I mean, out of a million unique views per month, somewhere in there, two or three million views between my channels, and tons and tons of regular fans. I certainly lost some. Anyway, yeah, pretty sad stuff. I mean, what what's the percentage? It's like 2%, right? Say 1.5 million regular views. So there's like 30,000 people in my audience lost their lives, probably. 30,000. Sad, man. Rest in peace.